Um, I hope you guys saw some type of value in like getting out there and working your ass off and doing business. Um, I am going to give Josh the floor now. Josh, if you want to just share, you know, what kind of what you've seen in the past 30 days and then also, you know, what you think it takes to be a first class professional in this business that lacks professionalism, because obviously we deal with that on a daily basis. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. First, before we get into that, if you are a loan officer specifically, I highly recommend that you take advantage of Jeff's offering for the bulk discount. Um, order them, package them up, take this presentation, put your own spin on it, and go to your local real estate agent offices, hand out the books for free, do a quick little 10, 15 minute presentation on exactly what we just talked about. That right there is going to bring so much value. And I guarantee you, there's no other loan officer in your area that's going to do that. So if you can get people to give you the time of day, like I said, bring bring bagels, bring coffee, bring lunch, whatever it is, but that that's all it takes. And you will create valuable relationships. You will eventually get business out of it and you will start to make a name for yourself in, in that market. So specifically speaking to mortgage professionals, I did it. I bulk ordered it. I'm, I'm, I'm applying it to my area. I highly, highly recommend it. So, and Josh, you did yeah. that before we were even together, working together. Yeah, yeah. We weren't even working together. Jeff showed me the book, said, hey, I'm willing to give you a bulk discount if you're willing to put the work in. I said, absolutely. It was a no-brainer to me. Um, and whenever I meet with people and I do this, I ask them, has anyone else been doing this? And every, nine, 10 times out of 10, everyone says no. No one else does it. Sure, they come in. They give you a presentation on the difference between a conventional and FHA loan. But guess what? Everyone else is doing that. This right here is a differentiator. You can bring additional value to people. And when you do it out of the kindness of your heart, right? I'm not showing up asking people to pay me for books. I'm bringing books to them, bringing coffee, asking for 10, 15 minutes of their time. That goes such a long way. And I'm a, I'm, I'm a proven example of that. So highly, highly recommend. So, and, and in terms of being a professional, it, speaking specifically to real estate agents, if you're, an, if you're a real estate agent, maybe in a new market, or maybe you're just a, a new real estate agent in general, you need to become a professional of your craft. You should know every single thing about every single listing, about every single recently sold property, every single comparable within your area, like the back of your hand. That's what a true professional is. Because if I'm a client, if I'm someone looking to sell my house, I want to work with someone that not only is very personable, right? You have to be a nice person, period. That just goes without saying. But I want to work with someone that actually knows what they're talking about, right? So that's what we mean about being a true professional. Um, Unfortunately, over the past few years, there have been a lot of imposters that have entered our industry, whether it's on the mortgage side, lending side, or on the real estate side, or, uh, you know, the real estate agent side, um, that, that, that aren't true professionals, right? They saw an opportunity to make a quick buck. I'm sure they made some money, but they didn't really put in the work. They, they didn't put in the time. They don't have the experience to be a true trusted advisor to their clients, and it shows. So whenever you can come along and you could be that person. And if you're a nice person, if you have good intentions, if you have integrity, and you generally want to create a connection with your clients, you add in the professional aspect of knowing what you're talking about, that per, you, you have a client for life hands down. So, uh, you know, Jeff and myself have, have come across, you know, people recently trying to offload deals that don't know what they're talking about. They're not willing to put in the work. They're not a true professional. And it shows right away. You can tell within a one minute phone call, with that person that they don't really know what they're talking about. They're really just trying to get something off their desk. And guess what? Jeff and myself come in here. We say the day because we are true professionals. We do genuinely care about giving the best client experience to that person. So that's why we look like, we look like the good guys. You know what I mean? So, um, so, so much of our industry has gotten away from that. I've seen it firsthand. I'm sure everyone on this call has seen it firsthand as well. Um, kudos to everyone on this call, by the way, I think this is our, record turnout. As long as I've been joining Zoom at noon, it's our record turnout. That goes to show that you guys are willing to show up, put in at least an hour of your time to want to get better, to want to hear success stories, to want to listen to what Jeff has to say. Because believe me, this isn't just nuanced stuff. Like this stuff does work. It's been it's been tried. It's been tested. Um, our industry has gotten away from it. People aren't willing to put in the work and that's all it takes. It just takes action, right? Everything, I mean, read all 57 ways. These aren't like crazy amount of time spending, very expensive activities. You just have to take action on them and they will work. So I um, hope everyone got value out of that. Um, continue to be a professional, continue to be that trusted advisor. People want to work with people who they know, like, and trust hands down, right? You don't have to be 
You don't have to have the best rates if you're a mortgage person, right? You don't have to have all of the products, but if someone knows you, they like you and they trust you because you, you put in that time to develop that relationship with them, that person is going to want to work with you over anyone else hands down. So, uh, Gabe, Gabe, if you want to hop on here, I know again, you're probably eating your pizza over there. Maybe if you want to just share again, like, I, you know, obviously full disclosure, Gabe and I started working together from a coaching standpoint, um, like share everyone, like your momentum, you know, where you were at the early part of the month, how you were able to turn that around, close deals. And then also what you saw from going out there, meeting real estate agents with the books and the feedback you got and how you had fun doing it. And also share with everybody, you know, what you do. Uh, definitely. Thanks. Um, by the way, my slice was phenomenal. So I, I appreciate it. I knew um, you were that. So is your, so is your haircut though. Your haircut's phenomenal. Everything's phenomenal. It's all right, man. I I'm not too fan. I'm, I'm a little self-conscious right here. I'm starting to thin out a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, wait, talk to me in two years from now. I don't want to hear about it. You know, but you still got a nice flow going on. I'm still trying to figure it out for myself. <laughs> But anyway, um, so I started working with Jeff, I would say, what was it, end of December? We, yeah, about a month ago, right? About a month, yep, about a month ago. Um, so uh, he had pointed out the books. I started reading the books a little bit, implementing them a little bit more. So I ended up going into January with no deals. Um, I was able to pull out two by the end of January to close for the month. Now I'm going into February. I should have by the way, it's looking six or seven, but when we, when I met with Jeff originally, I had nothing going on in the pipeline, not a single thing. So the, the books really helped me get traction and kind of create more conversation on the day to day with people and kind of review and review some of the material and just kind of get, get up engagement a little bit. It's really it. Yeah. I mean, again, so I mean, talk about like how you could like have people get like, get out of their comfort zone. Right. And like, as silly as it was, you were like, these people don't want to talk to me. Like, you know, I'm really like, I'm a mortgage guy, right? Like they know mortgage guys, but like the confidence, I guess it gave you that you expressed to me of like walking in and again, whether you're a realtor or a mortgage lender or insurance, but it doesn't matter. Right. Like how, like as silly as like a three or $4 book or $5 book. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is it's a, it's a, it's a nice gesture. Right. And, you know, also for the mortgage side, like we're not, you know, cause the worst thing, you know, from what I've experienced, the worst thing any real estate agent hates is, when a, when a law, mortgage guy calls them and says, give me business, right? This kind of, you know, showed me a different ap approach that it doesn't, it doesn't need to be salesy. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be um, so transactional. It's, Hey, let me help you. And let me show you how I can add value to you. And when you're ready, you know, let's work together. Right. Cause the way, and there was an old saying that I heard was people don't care about how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Right. So once I once I put that best foot forward and kind of flip the script of thinking, how can I build meaningful relationships and help other agents grow? I, I feel like that's when I, my confidence started changing and the way I, I view the business. Yeah. And I feel like this and kudos to you. Right. Because if, obviously, if you watch the presentation, I said, like, anyone could have done mortgages, anyone could have done deals 2020, 2021, some of 2022. Right. Like you knew what you knew. And then you made a decision to say, shit, I need to know more because like what I've done in the first X amount of months and years of my career, it's no longer that market, right? So like I always say, I could share everything with everybody, but it takes the person to execute and say, you know what? What Jeff says might sting, but he's saying it for a reason, right? Like how many times do I bust your chops? Like, dude, come on. Like, you know, like I bust your chops every day. Purposely but you also know that it's coming from a place of wanting you to succeed. Right. And it's yep. also coming from a place of like, this isn't your best interest if you execute on it. Right. I think a lot of people would say, you know, fuck Jeff. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He pissed me off. He insulted me. It's like, I'm not here to do that. Right. Like I'm here to help you make money. Right. I'm here to help you like move along your career and expedite that learning curve. Right. If I can help you like not make one or two mistakes that I made early in my career, but I didn't have a Jeff in my corner. Like to me, that's what, that's what the game is all about. You know? So again, like kudos to you for taking the initiative, doing that, pulling those deals out to close by the end of the month. And, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, what you, what you're able to accomplish not only for February, but really for the rest of this year. Yeah. And I just want to, I just want to share something too. And I also shared this with Gabe when him and I were connecting about, you know, kind of what the next step is, how to apply the realtor cookbook, whatever. 
So whenever you guys are applying, whenever you're going into a real estate office or a real estate agent, whenever you're going to any sort of networking event, you want to connect with clients, go into that meeting with absolutely zero expectations whatsoever, right? Don't go into these meetings expecting to sign a listing right then and there. If you're, if you're a mortgage person, don't go into these meetings with the real estate office expecting to walk out with all of their business. Have zero expectations because the second that you put an end result on that, trust me, you're going to be let down most of the time. If you go into it with the true intention of wanting to connect with that person or that office or that client, and you wanting to create that relationship, that's all that matters. So that's, I think it's a very important point. Don't go into it expecting any business out of it right away, because if you take that out of the equation, number one, you're not going to get let down because guess what? You have zero expectations. And number two, you're going into it with, with the right intention. I think Gabe, that's probably something that you um, took took from our calls, and I'm sure you've you've approached your meetings like that, trying to create real valuable relationships with people. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I always say like you have to touch people like physically, probably three to four times, maybe even six, maybe ten, maybe fifty before like they're even likely to think about giving you a deal, right? You know, I always say there are way too many mortgage people, and there are way too many real estate agents, right? And there are may many of those same that probably don't belong in our business and kind of like clog up our industry and give our industries a bad name, right? So like the more you become an expert, right? And the more you separate yourself from the pack, right? The more likely you are to align yourself with the right people that do business. And I, and I tell everyone this, look, you only need realistically five referral sources. Five humans, like an attorney, an accountant, a financial advisor, and like you add in the other two people. Maybe you have like a local market networking influencer that you deal with and know that just knows everybody. Um, but the like your sphere of influence, right, should carry you through any downturn. And if you have a transactional mindset and you operate under the transactional nature, you're never going to have a sphere of influence and you're never going to be a part of somebody's sphere of influence, right? So like, you need to have your core group of people that you know, like, love, and trust that you've done business with successfully and hopefully reciprocate the business for. And then everything, like, that's your planet system. And everything else, all the other planets are going to revolve in and out. Someone moves to Florida. Do you ever hear from them again? Someone dies, okay? Maybe you show up to their funeral and thank them for all the business, right? Send your, send your arrangements. But I tell you that because many people are so interchangeable. And I think what separates... From my experience now, having done this so long, like I tell people flat out, like, I don't care about your transaction. I don't care about your mortgage. I don't care about your home purchase. I care about you, right? And if I'm not the best candidate to work with you, I'm actually going to tell you that, right? And people are kind of like, whoa, like this is a little bit different. And I'm like, because if I see early on, we're not communicating effectively, right? Or you're unrealistic, or I don't have the time and patience that I think you need why am I going to put any more effort into this, right? Like, it's like, I'm going to move for coffee and you're trying to serve me tea, right? I'm going to go find my coffee. And I think too many people operate with the short-term transactional mindset rather than building that long-term alignment. And again, Nikki, Josh, Sherry will tell you, like I probably send 50 on a, on a light day, group text messages on a team thread every day. And like one of the biggest repeating factors is alignment. Like, if you want to succeed, you need to align with people that ha have the same morals, values, ethics, from work ethics to whatever, right? Because that's very important. And the other component is, like, you have to have fun. Like, if you saw the email I sent out, like, you have to incorporate fun. Like, Nikki's in Georgia. I used to love the Dirty Bird dance when the Falcons went to the Super Bowl way back when. Like, I'm trying to get her to do the Dirty Bird celebration dance. She's telling me it's too early to drink, but like, that's how you build camaraderie. That's how you have fun. Yeah. She just closed. She just made thousands of dollars. Excellent. Awesome. But you know what it boils down to at the end of the day? Not the money. Like the fact that I think she knows, and we know, like, we're all very excited to have Nikki as part of the team. Hopefully she's equally as excited. And she just started February off with a bang. You close the deal on the first day of the month. You only got one way to go, right? You already won that month if you start first day of the month off of the closing, right? Forget about the last day. 
Nikki, you want to hop on? I know you just. I was just going to say my borrowers are a lot happier that their first payment is in April and not March because of us doing this at the first of the month. So. Uh, yeah. Are you going to hit the dirty bird or what are we doing here? You hop on no. and do dance? No, I'm just excited. I just, I've enjoyed this, uh, this, this Zoom at noon specifically. I was also, if I don't mind interrupting you. Uh, no, you got the floor. You got the floor. Um, I wanted to backtrack to your page 27 of the folder scholar. I hadn't thought about it deeply until right now, but all of us, I at least, I assume almost all of us know or have a personal relationship with a teacher. And so not just like, getting to know the upper ends, the principal and the front office people, or just going to the students who are not likely to show their parents their folders because they don't want them to know they have homework. And so if you make connections with the teachers that you know, those teachers are best friends with the people in their grade, and then they can share that information. I just thought that would that I think would be a better way to hit at the school felt like just the school dynamic rather than the students because I students don't care so much and they don't like to show their parents things and but teachers teachers have no problem telling other teachers and talking to the parents about that so when you make the connections with the teachers I think that's a good idea love it awesome Thank you for sharing that. Go ahead, Rosie. I know uh, you got a lot of value to add. So if you want to take yourself off mute and share with everybody, you know, how you wear different hats, how you do everything that you do. And on top of being a, a mom, um, kind of tell everyone your story and like what's worked for you and how, you know, obviously we talk off and you know, how you've eliminated the, the time wasters, right? And really focused on, you know, especially again, being a mom and that being your priority, you know, really focusing on the people that you choose to work with at this point in your career. Or I'd probably take up about three days to uh, get through all of it, but I'll try. We got time. We can do Zoom at noon until next week. <laughs> okay. And I'm also here with my mom, who is also a real estate investor. So hey, any mom. questions you have, mom is here. Mom, come say hello. Oh. She's being shy for the first time ever. Listen, she better She's hit the dirty bird. You got to show her the dirty bird. Influencer, I actually <laughs> call her uh, to the Latino community. She sets up um, videos so she can educate um, our community on uh, politics, anything, you name it. So she's also, come, you're being so shy. <laughs> um, so speaking of hats today, I'm working for a construction company. So I actually own multiple businesses. The My main one is my private practice. Um, I'm also a local judge here in New York state. You're allowed to own a private practice and also be a judge. It's not like that in a lot of states. So people do get confused when, when they ask me, they're like, how, how could you do both? So not only do I do both, but I also own a construction company with my husband where we basically mix uh, everything together somehow, but we make it work because it all goes hand in hand, especially since most of my business involves real estate. Uh, the most important thing and piece of advice that I want to tell you is just don't annoy the attorneys. <laughs> If we're going to send a contract, we will send it. We're going to do our jobs, but let us do our jobs. When a real estate agent or broker call me about a million times to get a contract out because they want it signed immediately, you're not letting me do my job. You're not letting me protect my client. And I constantly tell people, let me look through everything. Let Give me some time. I'm going to get it done. Rushing somebody to get into a contract is not the best idea just so you can seal the deal. You want to make sure that your client, especially if you're, if you have it on both sides, seller or buyer, can they get out of this deal? Because guess who they're going to be mad at if they can't and they have to get out of it? You. So you want to make sure they're not going to be mad at the attorney. <laughs> you're the one who brought them the deal. So you want to make sure you let the attorneys do their jobs. And the reason I say that is because the brokers that I refer the most business to which I do refer a lot of business because especially my foreclosures and short sales uh, where the banks pay the brokers 5% directly and with no issue. Um, those are the people that, that I can work with the best who don't uh, constantly call me to send things out. They'll check up on things to see how things are going, but um, we're like family. It's just really important to just remain who you are and just, just understand the process and, and don't rush anybody. It's, it's the best way to say it because once you work together and make it a smooth process, then it's easy from there. And then you're gonna develop the relationship just like you would anybody else. 
So my mom actually heard me on the phone earlier with the real estate broker that I work with all the time. And she can attest to it. We're, we're literally like family. We're going out for coffee on Monday, but I send her a bunch of deals because she works with me like that. And I appreciate it. Um, so if I appreciate that, I'm going to send her a ton of business. And that's just the way it works on my end. It's just a, a reciprocal relationship. But um, that's pretty much it. Jeff, you want to uh, ask me anything or? I mean, we talk all the time. So I, really, like, I know. I really, I really know. Like, where <laughs> I know. I talk to you every day. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, I mean, obviously, thanks for sharing your experience on that. Um, Sean, I see you took yourself off mute. You know, do you maybe have any questions for Rosie? Again, she's in the foreclosure short sale space, which again, is coming back. I'm not sure if you maybe want to- Very much brain. so. And um, especially if you're in New York and New Jersey, yeah. um, they just passed some laws, especially last month, and the foreclosures have already written, risen. So get ready for that. You can, you can make a lot of money from them uh, because people, especially distressed homeowners, they spread the word quicker than anybody. It's truly a referral business. So once you get, I actually don't advertise for my foreclosures. Uh, it, someone's sister will come to me and call me, oh, you helped my sister save her house or you sold it, whatever the case is. It's a huge referral business because it, it involves someone who's sympathetic to the situation and understands and, and you have to make someone feel comfortable in that process. So it, it's really coming back. Sean, you got anything? No, I, I was just going to say, like, touching on what you said at the beginning of the meeting, like, I look at, like, your life is a culmination of your choices. So if you don't have deals in your pipeline, you don't have money coming in, there's no one else to blame. It's just you. So, I mean, I, I, I look at a lot of the methods and the madness of, like, what all the, the quick rich schemes are and all that stuff, and it's like... It just comes down to being consistent, setting time blocks up and saying, I'm going to do this much work every day and then generate this many returns on that. And that's so if you don't have anything in your pipeline, like there's no there's nobody else other than the guy in the mirror. You know, that's and that's the hardest truth is like everything works. Everything in that book works. Every lead gen system I've ever thought of doing, they all work. You know, if you want to handwrite yeah, if you, notes, if you work it right or not, you, want to, you know, you go to do open houses, whatever you want to do, they all work. You just have to do them consistently day in and day out and get over the idea that like you're going to be done because you're not going to ever be done ever in, in this business. You're never going to be done. I always like joke around like I'm always available 24 seven. Right. But you got to remember, like we have the freedom I joke around like, hey, yeah, I make calls for my underwear, you know, 25 hours a week. Like, OK, that, dude, that works. Like, it makes sense economically. Like you're comfortable. Like, you know what? And then maybe you are working the other 25 hours a week and meeting people and all the other stuff you have to do, right? Like there's no right or wrong. You have to figure out what works for you. And the key is being consistent with it, where I think a lot of people uh, were negatively impacted by COVID, where like they're not getting out of their house, they're not getting to the office, they're not being physically around like-minded people. Like, and, like we joked, obviously, like I drove 96 miles yesterday to meet you for a sandwich, shake hands, just say, hey, you know what? I'm me, you're you. Hopefully something great comes out of this. It might not be today, tomorrow, maybe 10 years from now, right? But like a 200 mile round trip in a couple hours, like, you know what? That's fucking fun. And like, you're in a different part, getting to know a different market, hopefully a different great person. Like, that's what life is all about. And I think people in this business get so like, again, locked into their quarters that they forget to do all those fun little things that reinvigorate them. So again, thanks for obviously having me yesterday and obviously appreciate you know, the love me, right? and everything else. But like, I don't care where you are. Like, that's why we do these weekly calls because if you're having a bad Monday, Tuesday deals die, hopefully this call reinvigorates you. If you had a kick-ass Monday, Tuesday, this call should propel you to close the week off strong, right? Like you might hear one thing from one person that says, you know what? Holy shit. Rosie's hundred percent right. I got to do this. And then next week you're like, yeah, I did this. You know, I, you believe I got a listing from this local uh, foreclosure attorney. It's like, oh my God, we just made $10 million. And like, I know you don't know this story, right? But like Nikki was brought onto Zoom at noon way back when, right? Sherry, Josh, and Nikki, all three who are on my team. And I swore to myself in 2018, not only will I never be around the residential mortgage business again, I will never have a team. This is bullshit. People don't work. They want to milk me for everything. And then when someone offers them a, a larger payout, I did all the work. They did nothing and they're gone, right? 
Well, I created the Zoom and Noon community. Here I am a year and a month later with three of the best people that I have in my life. Josh and Nikki, I speak to every day. I've never met them in person. Mm -hmm. Never met them in person, right? Like, and again, I say that and I'm, we're building a multi, back to building a multi-million dollar per year revenue stream in both the residential side of the business and the commercial alternative lending side of the business, right? Uh, and I've done it all on my own past couple of years purposely. Like, but now we're doing it with other people and those people are succeeding under the umbrella, right? So like, and again, we've never met each other. So if you don't think like weekly Zooms are powerful people that you've never met in person, like they are. And if you don't show up, you can't expect to show out, right? And you never know who you're going to meet or who's going to inspire you. And hi, Felicia, great to see you. I haven't seen you since 2019, so I think we're overdue. Um, <laughs> you know, I think again, like you don't have to physically meet everybody, right? Like energy doesn't lie. People's actions and how they conduct themselves, you know, sometimes you don't know everything and that's fine. But when someone keeps showing up every week for 50 weeks, you're going to see results. You have no other outcome than to succeed or get better by showing up for a half an hour every week consistently. And that's what it takes. And again, Nikki wants to buy a yacht. The day I met her, I said, if you come on board at any point, any given time, it's a perfect opportunity. Whatever opportunity she was working on fell through. We took her on. And you know what? She bought into the system. She shows up consistently. She's 24 years old. And she just started February off with a multi-hundred thousand dollar closing. Right. So like kudos to her for beating out rocket mortgage by doing things the right way. Right. And that's what we need more of in this business. It's not about the paycheck. It's about the purpose and what you're building with good people like yourself. Um, so that's all I have. I like to talk as you guys know, but uh, Jennifer, Melanie, Naomi, I don't know if you guys want to hop off or ask questions, like hop off like the mute and ask questions or, you know, tell us how we can help you, what you're looking for. Uh, what you thought of obviously your first zoom at noon we'd love some feedback um just want to hear again like from great people you guys are obviously all welcome to join every wednesday at noon felicia even feel free to hop on share tell them what you have going on um actually the whole oh, conversation Sherry, yeah. just hi, Sherry. hi. <laughs> um the whole conversation just made me realize that um since we're in the same city jeff um in jersey city there is a local lacrosse group and I used to play lacrosse in college and high school um they're looking for coaches and and whatnot to help their teams and it's a lot of parents and their kids so I'm actually just signing up to be a coach so they meet every Wednesday and then they have tournaments on the weekends yeah, and look, you so can't fake your passion you know what I mean one of the best yeah. ways to give back and like meet people is like to follow your passion like and I think people as life goes on you know, we're told to like get away from what makes us happy and we eliminate the thing that motivates us or drives us or that we're passionate about. And like, you know, I'm fortunate to have a four-year-old who not only busts my balls every day, but like I get to relive a lot of my childhood. And if you are a parent, whether you're a dog parent or a kid parent or whatever, right? An aunt or uncle, like get back to like how simple happiness, like the little things bring them. Like, why does my son love a shoebox more than the $200 toy that came in the shoebox. I don't know, because he likes to use his imagination, right? So like, guys, use your imagination. Like, have fun with it. And that's why I wrote this stupid book, right? As stupid as it is, right? Because at the end of the day, it's so stupid, yet it's so practical, right? Have fun with it. Meet people. Like, team up with a realtor. Team up with a mortgage person. Pick one random thing per day and do it. Try it. And like get back to each other with results, but like have fun doing it. Like this is a team sport. And for whatever reason, everyone thinks that they're operating on their own solo. It's a team sport and it needs to get back to a team sport. And that's the culture that breeds success because you need to win, but you also need to win with other people. No one's closing a deal on their own start to finish. It's physically impossible. So again, I appreciate everyone for, you know, hopping on, jumping on as usual. Uh, Rob Portal, you want to hop on and kind of like share your first Zoom at Noon experience? We're happy you popped the cherry. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, great, great uh, feedback. If anything, uh, Jeff, actually, I don't know if you, uh, if you if you remember, but I do have the book as well. I do. I sent it to you like yeah. a year ago, maybe yeah, a little over a year sent, ago. Yeah, you sent it to me. I started applying it as well. And look, if anything, I, I took 
uh, to heart the whole networking situation, going out there, shaking people's hands. And really, I tailored it down to two questions, two main questions. And I'm looking at this because I have another screen right here, by no, the you're way. Good. You're good. You're um, good. I, I ask, you know, hey, what's your name and what is it that you're looking for? Right. And those type of questions have gotten me, you know, uh, deals as well. In fact, um, I'll share that after this. Uh, Jeff, Josh, and myself are going to jump in another call with uh, with a developer that wants to build, you know, homes here in Ventura, California, right? So working out a deal and whatnot, and really, it all just came from networking itself, just me going out there and shaking people's hands. So I can't really, you know, I cannot emphasize that anymore. It's worked out for me, but obviously, all the other um, points pointed out in the book are also great, great sources of a potential referral business as well. So thanks, man. You know, it's uh, like I said, you know, a little book, you know, it's it, it, it's worked out well for me too. So appreciate the... Uh, yeah, uh, anytime, man. Obviously, we look forward to building with you, closing deals together, making money together, you know, having a trusted source and relationship inside the industry, uh, literally on the other side of the country, right? Um, yeah. But again, yeah, I think like right. we met each other through social media, through Instagram, right? So like, right. if you don't believe in the power of Instagram and like, you know, people were like, what are you doing? Why are you posting so much? And I'm like, because I'm posting valuable shit. Like it works. Like, how do you make your own content? Who manages your content? I'm like, I manage my own content. I do my own posts. I only have my logins. Like, how do you post so much stuff a day? I'm like, it's because I'm working, right? So like the more okay. you work, the more real life, real time content you have, you can't be embarrassed or ashamed of what you're seeing in real time, right? So like if I'm sitting in traffic in New York City, I post New York City, like we finance office buildings. Someone's messaging me, Jeff, uh, I'm in Sacramento. Can you help me with this office building financing? Like as stupid as that is, it's free. I'm occupying my time, but I'm letting everyone know, hey, I'm here if you guys need me, right? So like the value that social media brings selectively with the right people Equally, I get stupid messages and comments all day long, and I have to refrain from like flying across the country to rip people's heads off. But <laughs> with that, right, luckily they're across the country and I can move on to the good people that I met through social media. Right, Rob? So again, like there's nothing more exciting or like, as far as I'm concerned, prosperous than an online digital relationship that turned into a five figure commission check for the both of us. Because you know what? This shit works. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. but you know like again like that's a proven testament cost you nothing to meet me cost me nothing to meet you we've been in communication for a year plus now if we close a multi-million dollar deal together like that's a pretty freaking cool story and 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 most importantly of all it's, it's free you know it didn't cost me anything it didn't cost you anything you know i saw just being proactive being active on social media following people and 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 just you know even just leaving a comment like you mentioned oh hey i, I love this post you know it just can lead to something else and by the way, man, if we close this deal, I'm, I'm flying out there and, and partying with you guys, with you and Josh. So just a heads up. <laughs> that means Josh has to come to New York City from Pittsburgh. So you're going to have to talk to him about that one. I'm there. <laughs> Robert, Robert, you could drop in Pittsburgh, pick me up, and I'll, and then we'll continue on in there, New York City. There you go. There we go. <laughs> I'm just going to show up. Everyone's <laughs> yeah, invited. Everyone's invited. <laughs> Rob, Sherry's our security, in case you didn't know. So, like, if you think she's just a pretty face, she's actually our muscle. Like, yeah, you gotta watch out. For note her. it. Note it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome guys. Well, does anybody have anything else to share? Those couple people that haven't said anything. Uh, again, appreciate you guys all. Like, I think you guys can all feel the energy and how powerful this is. And like, look, the more people that show up. The more energy it gets built, the more momentum that gets forward, the more business that gets done. Because look, at the end of the day, yeah, we're all here to have a good time, laugh, learn, but like the end result is making money, right? And having good people in the industry that you can rely on in different markets throughout the country, right? To even just check in with, and again, this is why I'm so big on the social component of it. You don't have to physically meet people in 2023 to make money, do business and have a friend somewhere that you've never met before. Right. So like, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, like there are great people out there and how you operate attracts those other great like-minded people. Your office might suck. Your colleagues might suck. Your manager might suck. Your company might suck. That's a fact. It happens in every industry, right? That doesn't mean you can't find your tribe somewhere else creatively. So Love you guys all. Hope you guys have a great week. Rob, let us know what time. I think you said 1.30, right, with your clients. Me, you, and Josh can hop on that call. But, you know, guys, keep going. Proud of you. Hopefully you guys found value in this. And we'll see you guys all next week at Zoom at noon. Have a great week. It was so good Thank to you. see you, Jeff. Thank Thanks. you. We need you on here more often. You know what? I have 
freaking back to back. I have three one uh, 12 to ones every every Wednesday and Thursday. It's horrible. So, but I was like, I need a little boost of Jeff. So oh, pop it in, Jeff, pop it listen, in. the only problem is I I would change Zoom at noon, but I can't have to change the name for you. I can't change Zoom at noon. Yeah. No, I know you can't. And I'm doing my best. I'll try to be here more often. <laughs> Well, you're awesome as always. You know, I love the heck of Melanie, what's up? We got something to say? I see how far. Uh, no, you know, I always <laughs> enjoy being here. I see that picture in the background. I see like selling Atlanta, like kind of like words yeah. showing up. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. Keep working. It's all it takes. Keep working. Absolutely. Keep rocking and rolling. Melanie, I actually love that picture in the background. Oh, that's badass. It, that it, is it bad really ass. is. And you look so professional and so beautiful in that picture. And thank I love you. that background picture. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Rosie, Melanie's got engaged. And uh, you know we've been busting her chops because I say, like, with that face and that smile, you should be writing 100 loans a month. But if you hide yourself in your office... No one gets to see that face or smile. But, but with that, that picture, picture no, you months. have no more hiding in that office. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, guys. You guys have a great day. You all kick butt.